Today I'm going to talk about the live composite feature on your Olympus camera. Okay, so live composite is basically a form of long exposure photography. Uh, but instead of leaving the shutter open uh, for a period of time, it's going to take multiple pictures uh, at some interval and then stack them together. Uh, so it's very similar to focus stacking uh, where, you know, the camera is going to take several pictures like the pages in this uh, notebook and then combine them into one single image. And that's basically all live composite is, but instead of, you know, focus points and stacking the sharp images together or the sharp parts together, uh, it's just going to be adding new light from all the other images, okay? And it's really a lot easier to demonstrate than to try to explain, so we'll go ahead and get into that. But, uh, you know, Live Composite is honestly a little bit outside of my comfort zone. Uh, this was a request from one of my viewers, but I say it's out of my comfort zone because it's really the most creative part of the Olympus camera, right? Or one of the creative parts. And I'm not really a creative person uh, by nature. You know, I try to get creative when I solve problems in photography, but... Uh, Artistically speaking, though, I do real estate, I get the lines straight, I'm good, right? Uh, but in any case, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, with live composite, like I said, it's, it's a form of long exposure photography, so you need to kind of apply the same caveats to uh, live composite as you would long exposure. So generally, you want to be on a tripod, uh, you're going to turn off the image stabilization, and then you're going to... Um, try to use a del delayed shutter or electronic, um, I'm sorry, a wireless shutter release of some kind. Uh, I'm just gonna use the delayed shutter, so I'll show you how to set that up. Uh, and, then, and that's really it. And then use anti-shock uh, shutter mode, okay? Uh, because unfortunately in live composite, um, electronic shutter is not available. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this set, uh, look at some of the settings. To go into live composite mode, you have to be in manual mode on the camera. That's the only way to get to it. So I've done a factory reset on my EM10 Mark II here. And uh, I'm in manual mode, as indicated down here. So let me put the, touch the focus on. And then uh, the default settings, you know, from factory are 250th of a second at 5.6 and of course, this is blinking the EV meter, telling me I'm way, way underexposed. But let's go ahead and put this into live composite mode. So I do that by just dialing down the shutter speed beyond 60 seconds. So I just keep turning. And then first thing it does is go into bulb mode. And then the next thing is live time. And then finally, the last item is live composite. Okay, now with live composite uh, being a manual mode, uh, you can still control shutter speed, aperture, and um, ISO, okay, among, you know, other things. But in terms of exposure, you still have full control over that uh, with the one limitation. The shutter speed is going to be limited to a half a second as the fastest shutter speed available, all the way up to 60 seconds as the longest exposure available. So that's why uh, live composite is used in uh, basically night photography, like star trails and city lights, things like that, because, because of the long shutter speed limitations, and that's, that's what it's designed for. Um, and that's not to say you can't use it in daytime, right, with an ND filter and, and do something creative that way. But uh, let's, let's just work with it sort of uh, the way it's designed to be used. And... Um, when I'm looking at this, it's telling me that, whoops, turn this back on. Now that I'm in live composite, it's telling me I'm at f5.6, but the EV meter is saying zero so that this is a properly exposed picture, uh, according to the camera. And honestly, with live composite, the first picture you want to take, because like I said, it's, it's taking multiple pictures. The first one you want to take, the base exposure, you want it to be really well underexposed, okay? So what I'm going to do is just increase the aperture. And now you can see I'm three stops underexposed. Uh, the other way to underexpose it is to uh, adjust the shutter speed, right? Speed that up. But like I said, you're limited to half a second. But how do you adjust the shutter speed? Because if I try to change the shutter speed, it takes me out of live composite. 
So you actually have to go into the menu. And fortunately, when you click the menu button, it goes right to the composite setting shutter speed. Okay, right now the shutter speed is set to one second. And if I just go up, you can see I can increase this all the way to 60 seconds. And then it rotates back around to half second, which is the fastest shutter speed. So let's also use half shutter speed. Okay. And now it's blinking. Uh, minus three means I'm more than three stops exposed. And since we were at one second before and we went to a half a second, I've only probably added one more stop of uh, underexposure. So we're probably at about minus four. But with uh, live composite, it's okay because we're going to be adding light to the image. Um, had I taken this image at the regular exposure of zero, you know, adding light would start to overexpose it, right? So we're going to start at like minus four stops of light. And then as I mentioned, uh, you can also, by going into the super control panel, control ISO. So I can even go to low ISO, uh, but we'll just leave it at 200. I still have control over white balance and focus points. So everything that's still in white here, you can control. Um, and I'm going to change this to uh, the first art filter there, pop art. And then also let me change the framing to 16 by nine so that you guys can see the, the image full screen, right? <laughs> Rather than me having to try to crop and zoom it in post. But anyway, Okay, so that looks good. Uh, the other thing I want to do is I do want to do anti-shock shutter. So again, you're trying to eliminate as much vibration as possible, right? And then it looks like uh, image stabilization is already off. Yeah, so we're good there. And let me just pick a single focus point. Okay, roughly right there okay so that looks good I think um, those are the only settings I need to change before I take the first image the base image uh, for live composite I think that's, that's pretty much everything so I'm going to touch the focus right on the eye and this is what I mean it, it's a little hard to compose at night right and let's take the first image and it tells you right here shutter button once to prepare for composite shooting. And that's the first picture. Now you see where it says ready for composite shooting. So basically that's going to start layering anything it takes after this. So every half a second it's going to take a picture and then layer that new picture on top of the original picture that we just took. Okay, so it's easier to demonstrate but let me go ahead and click the shutter button and get started. So you'll notice right away on the screen down here is telling you it's using a half a second shutter speed and it's counting how many pictures it's taken so far. And unlike uh, long exposure photography where the shutter stays open, you know, obviously it would start to get brighter if that were the case, but in live composite it's not doing that. It's only taking a picture every half second and adding whenever it sees new light. And since I haven't introduced any new light yet, this can take a thousand pictures and it won't make any difference, right? Okay. And then the bottom number here is just a timer saying I've been running for 38 seconds. And then over here, you'll see the uh, histogram and everything being over here to the left just tells me, yeah, I'm grossly underexposed. But, uh, okay, so let's do some light painting, okay, as one of the uh, examples of how to use live composite. Now for this halo creature uh, in the video game, I know his sword is like uh, glowing uh, in the video game. So I'm just going to try and imitate that. And I'm going to use this, uh, you know, LED flashlight that I got at the dollar store. And I'm going to start adding light to his, see if I can do this without illuminating anything else. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Let me see if I can come from the top. Yeah. Okay. And then the sword is going to be glowing um, a little bit. So let me add some light from the side. So it looks like it's glowing 
along the body of this creature. Okay, there, that's looking good. And then if the sword is glowing, it's gonna be hitting the ground and kind of all the way around in a spherical pattern, right? So let's try and mimic that. Let's hit a little bit on his foot. And then let's hit a little bit on the other foot. Uh, a little bit on the ground. And then uh, looks like it's right on his chest too, should be a good spot. So let's do that. A little bit more. And then a little bit in the front there. Okay. That looks pretty good. So basically it's now composited 350 pictures in three minutes. And if I'm happy with this, I can stop here. So what I mean, so this is what I mean, you can add light, but uh, it's not going to continue exposing the light. It's gonna just add whatever new light is there and only add light when it gets brighter. So I have this uh, can cooler here that I use time to time. If I put this in front, you'll notice it's not changing the exposure at all because I'm not adding any new light. Uh, what would be kind of neat is if they do a firmware update where you can kind of do subtract light, right? Because it is taking multiple pictures. It should be able to calculate where light's being subtracted, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> Hopefully they do that. That would be kind of neat. But that's basically it. So I'm happy with this. Let me, let me go ahead and click the shutter button. And I'll post a picture up here unedited, you know, just straight out of camera so you can kind of see uh, what it's doing. Um, <clears throat> but that looks pretty good. So let's do... Uh, one more quick example um, where I'm going to try and create some smoke and flames like uh, like he's looking into, uh, well, let's say a grenade exploded in front of him, okay? Uh, and then there's smoke and flames from that. And I can use basically this flashlight again to do that. So we're going to stay with the same base exposure, uh, minus four stops roughly. Let's go ahead and take the base exposure like this and then go ahead and get started. And uh, let's see, what I'll do is use my thumb to cover the light to get a little bit of an orange glow from my finger. And then let's, let's go in slowly and see, there, I'm starting to come in. And then do a couple of quick jabs out. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so there's some flames. Now let's add a little bit of smoke and I can just do that with my hands, right? Uh, because my hand is brighter than this uh, black background or my black t-shirt. So if I put my hand in, it should be adding that light. And remember, I'm at a half a second shutter speed, so if I keep my hand moving, it shouldn't uh, get a sharp image of my hand. It should just get a blur. Okay. And that's Let's try some flames. And some more smoke. Okay. Let me add some smoke here. And last but not least, uh, let's get the sword to glow again. Okay. Just using the same flashlight. down and then we'll add the glow on this side yeah that looks pretty good only problem I have now is the flames or the explosion is not generating any light on his face so 
I'm just going to use this uh, notebook divider that I got at the dollar store. And it's just a plastic. And, and I get like six or eight of these for a dollar and I cut them out to make gels for my flashes. But uh, this is just an extra one I had. But let me add a little bit of orange light to his face. There, that looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit on the top. Okay. That looks pretty good. It's really hard to see, but that looks pretty good. Let's just end it there. Okay, so I'm going to click the shutter button again. And let's take a look at how that came out. Okay, not bad. Not bad, but you get the idea. Generally, you can... Um, do light painting in different ways and get creative and like i said this is a little bit out of my comfort zone but i did the best i can uh but again watch the olympus video to see um some i get some ideas from there i'll put the link down below um the only other thing i forgot to mention with live composite and i well i did mention but i forgot to set it and i'll show you it's in the menu button or menu uh and you have to go to shooting menu number two Because since you cannot set the self timer button on the uh, in the shutter mode, you have to do it here in shooting menu number two. And right now the default is set to zero seconds. So let's change that to two seconds. And I think you can crank this up to thirty seconds, but um, I think two seconds is good enough. So now when I push the shutter button, it's, you know, it should, whoops. Let's go back in there. I think I forgot to hit OK. There. So I get the base exposure. Take another picture. And now it waits two seconds. So there's not a two second delay on the base exposure. But when it starts doing the composites, uh, that's when you get the two second delay, but okay. That's pretty much it all the settings that you can adjust um, If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and uh, I appreciate you guys watching I'm gonna do some more videos on some of the unique features with Olympus cameras So if you're interested in seeing more uh, hit the subscribe button and hopefully we'll see you again soon